2019 was a big year for esports. From official leagues moving towards a franchise model to shocking upsets, the industry got an unprecedented amount of attention. Since so much has happened, we understand it's easy to let some details slip. So let us rewind it all for you. This is esports in 2019. One of the biggest signs of how big esports has become is the amount of mainstream attention it received in 2019. Fox News brought in esports consultant Rod Slasher Breslow multiple times to discuss issues in gaming. Esports tournaments made headlines, filling up stadiums like Arthur Ashe in New York City and the Mercedes Benz Arena in Shanghai. Late night talk show host Jimmy Fallon even featured Ninja and Overwatch League champions Super and Sinatra on the show. More than just attention, the growth of esports is reflected in the numbers. According to Newzu, the global audience for esports surpassed 450 million viewers. This year also marks the first time esports revenue will surpass the $1 billion mark. A big chunk of that number comes from endemic and non endemic brand investments. Apart from the usual brands associated with gaming like HyperX or Omen, non endemic brands like Coca Cola and Kia Motors came roaring in. This year, esports captured the attention of even more musicians and traditional athletes. Musical artists like The Weeknd and Tory Lane started investing in the scene. Big players like actor Will Smith and tennis star Taylor Fritz also joined the ever-growing list of investors in esports. So 2019 was clearly a big year for investments. But let's bring it back to the core of esports, because the action that happened within each individual esports scene was even more exciting. This year, Riot Games earned full bragging rights. League of Legends garnered a lot of views, and its World Championship set the record for the most watched esports tournament of all time. The semi-final match between SK Telecom T1 and G2 Esports peaked at 3.98 million views. But if he wants to turn this fight in favor of Team, this could be the game. He gets the fight moment. Faker is gone. Teddy's next on the list. There's no way he can duel Yasuo Amada's coming in, but he's just walking into the meat grinder of perks. Caught. Can he do it? Perks. They've done enough. They've done it. The greatest team in the history of League of Legends. Taken down by the greatest team Europe has ever produced. The year was good to G2, but the year was even better for the LPL's Fun Plus Phoenix. They took down MSI champs G2 Esports to lift the Summoner's Cup. The favorites of G2 in Paris did not stand a chance. And Fun Plus, they've taken down the Nexus. They turn their attention to Wonder. Tian goes down. Perks kills Kim Goon. The Nexus is being focused. It's going down. And Fun Plus Phoenix are your world champions. Taking a page out of Riot Games book, the Call of Duty League announced that it would be moving towards a franchise model. To close out an era of Call of Duty, the World Finals took place in Los Angeles in an epic showdown between 100 Thieves and E United. We have numbers here for a moment. Slasher was picking up the flank, but now he comes back in. Christini takes down two. It get all in here. It's on Octane. It's on Slasher. E United do it. And with that, the CWL as we know it came to an end. Toronto Ultra's band stopped by the squad studio to chat about expectations for the upcoming year. But everything else is kind of exciting because there's a reason to actually get behind the team now because you're from the city. Mm -hmm. um, last year or like previous years, teams have struggled to get fan bases. Mm -hmm. But now, because obviously you're repping that city, it, it should be easy if they do it correctly to bring them in. Over in Dota 2, the international came back bigger than ever. The crowdfunded prize pool was an insane $34 million and currently holds the record for the highest prize pool for an esports tournament. So, who took home the hefty prize? Oh my god, I can't believe this. I can't believe what we're seeing in this game for. OG, oh you thought you saw it all in game two, you thought it saw it all in game three, and then it is gone! OG, I up two! OG became back-to-back -back TI champions, cementing themselves as the best team in Dota 2. On this subject of impressive tournament winnings, we can't leave out Fortnite. If it weren't for Dota 2, the Fortnite World Cup would have taken the record with its sweet $30 million prize pool. Fortnite esports had a lot to prove, and at the World Cup, prove it did. All in the name of Booga. One build left, the final moment of Fortnite World oh Cup! Oh my gosh! Bow Run. down! Surprise. Bow down to Booga! Over in the Overwatch League, a lot of eyes were on it to see if it could keep the hype from Season 1 going. And what better way to generate hype than a shocking upset? 
Slime steps up. He is felled. Tizzy now gets to the point, but Slime is already removed from the fight. The wrecking ball is down, and Janu, he can't touch. He is walled off. The door is shut. Now. According to Blizzard, the OWL Grand Finals reached an audience of 1.1 million average viewers, which was a 16% increase from Season 1. However, the question now is whether the league will see a similar or an increase in viewership next year when it switches to a homestand model. Let's switch to an eSport that relies on a significantly different model. I'm talking about CSGO. Despite a slow start, 2019 has wrapped up with Astralis sitting pretty at the top. Bomb is tapped, not planted for him. He's got it down to the 1v1. Zipex could very well clutch this if he sticks it. No way! Astralis! Enjoy! This is yours, Astralis! Over in the FGC, the top remained on top for the most part. However, there were some standout moments. In Tekken, a game heavily dominated by Japan, an outsider rose among the gods. Arslan Ash won both EVO and EVO Japan to cement himself among the best. I'm oh. holding my breath. Oh! They trade blows. Oh! Oh, man! That was a crazy trade. Arslan cementing his position as the best Tekken player. Arslan Ash put Pakistan on the map as a region of contenders and opened up doors for fellow players Awaii's Honey and Bilal. In Street Fighter V, it's hard to argue against Punk being the most skilled player. However, Capcom Cup 2019 champion Idom may have something to say about that. It must be noted that Idom is currently sponsorless, but it's safe to say that that will change going into the new year. Let's move on over to the Smash Bros scene. In Smash Bros Melee, we see players like Hungrybox, Wizrobe, and Leffen remain consistent above the rest. But in 2019, let's be honest, all of us were much more interested in Ultimate. And so we must give it up for Ultimate player MKLeo, who took this year by storm. This blew up so quickly. Oh, oh my god. Oh, oh the tech rolls that's no, it. The, the ledge drop. Yeah. The buzz up it. Oh. That's it. And Leo that's it. wins Smash Ultimate. A lot of more fighting game action went down this year, but we have to move on. If we went through every single game, we'll be here till 2020. But that doesn't mean we don't love you, Dragon Ball Fighters, MK11, Soul Calibur, Base Blue, there's just so many. Okay, so let's switch gears and talk about Rocket League. The Season 8 Grand Final saw another NA versus EU Final and crowned the boys of energy as champions. Very pin. He's got past two players. Looks for a buff. Garrett G clears line. Justin! 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 This championship makes Turbo Pulsa a four-time world champion. Soon, they're going to start making him play blindfolded. Women in esports has always been a topic of interest, and in 2019, one woman in particular stepped to the forefront. On November 2nd, VK Lion became the first female to win the Hearthstone Grandmasters Global Finals, let alone a BlizzCon esports tournament. 17 damage in play. Desert Spear is going to come through and Lion becomes the first woman to reach the pinnacle of competitive Hearthstone. She is your 2019 BlizzCon champion and your 2019 global champion. A lot of esports supporters like to turn to T-Sports esports, that's traditional sports games like FIFA, NBA 2K or Madden, and dismiss them. So while they are currently a niche, they are a growing niche. The NBA 2K League made headlines when Chiquita became the first female drafted to play this year. Come 2020, the league plans to expand even further. Shanghai will get an expansion franchise and the league will be introducing international talent to the upcoming draft. NHL Esports took a step forward as well, with the Washington Capitals entering the scene. Its first move, the signing of Chell player John Wayne. Yeah, a lot went into the process. Uh, we had a long, lengthy interview process and we just found out that uh, we were a perfect match for each other and I was the right ambassador to lead Caps Gaming going forward. Um, as far as me, I'm super excited. It's a dream come true to be signed by an NHL organization, be the first NHL esports player. Now, if you happen to be on your phone while watching this, that's actually okay, because it supports the point I'm about to make. Mobile esports is still in its early days, but this year saw the genre grow and establish itself even more. According to Dot Esports, PUBG Mobile hit the $1.5 billion mark in revenue. 
The game is hugely popular in China, with the United States and Japan following in terms of market value. PUBG Corp has stated that it plans to support the esports scene even more in 2020, with a four-level competitive scene and a total of $5 million in prize pools. Call of Duty also released its mobile version this year, and Riot Games had announced that it is working on a mobile version of League of Legends. So with existing titles and many more to come, mobile esports is looking promising. 2019 was definitely full of high highs, but we can't review the year without mentioning some lows. While there was an increase in viewership and interest in the scene, the year was also full of teams dropping rosters and calling it quits due to financial troubles. Denial Esports got called out for not paying players, and after the CEO made some PR nightmare statements, the org folded quicker than a poker player with a horrible hand. Echo Fox also called it quits after founder Rick Fox called out an investor for supposedly using racist language. Game publishers weren't immune to public scrutiny either. Blizzard Activision faced its fair share of backlash when it punished Hearthstone player Blitzchung for voicing support for Hong Kong during a broadcast. Uh, from China, that same very day, Activision Blizzard uh, punished a Hearthstone player for, in a post-game interview, saying to support Hong Kong. He is from Hong Kong. Um, uh, shortly after the interview was over, uh, Blizzard decided to fine him uh, a bunch of money, take away all his money, suspend him from the tournament, and fire both of the casters. Uh, as much backlash as the NBA got from that incident, Activision Blizzard got pretty much 10 times as much of backlash because gamers are very good at coming together when they're, they're angry at something. So where does esports go from here? We'll have to wait till 2020 to see. But until then, have a great rest of 2019, and we'll see you next year.